Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here. You know, some people are really in the language study, and these two Bibles are giving people in one volume a chance to do some language study. And one is probably the most popular is the Hebrew Greek Keyword Study Bible by AMG Publishers, American Ministry to the Greeks, 1555 North Shalliford Road, Spiro Zotiates, Chattanooga, Tennessee. That's where that is. And this is something in New King James that is put out by a Thomas Nelson, and it's relatively new. We'll look in the front and see when these Bibles were done. I do think Zodiates had to pay some money to like Moody because he maybe uh, lifted some stuff. He didn't attribute certain things that maybe he should have, but anyhow, it's still just this perennial bestseller. And every time they do an edition, one thing I always love about the Hebrew Greek Keyword Study Bible, it's like every edition is out of this world. They, they've gone through over the years a few. But you can see that it'll have grammatical codes. When I studied uh, Greek, I studied it from a little different perspective. I did it more on like how you do English as your native tongue and all this. So I didn't really get into all this. And then once I figured out the King James translators were smarter than anybody today, I just kind of quit. Let me just show you their presentation page here. It has a nice little presentation page. It's going to be quite a bit larger than the NKJV Word Study Bible. So if I was going to carry, I would carry the NKJV uh, Word Study Bible. But if I'm studying on the inside, that's something else. Okay. So let's see, Pulpit Helps, man. I don't know if Pulpit Helps is still around. For years I had a subscription to Pulpit Helps. Absolutely fantastic. Now this is printed in South Korea. I wonder if it's printed the same place the defined King James Bible is. Okay, so this actually came out in 1984. That's the reason I was saying it's actually been out for a while. Here's their presentation page. We'll show you too what it looks like without the slip cover. Kind of just the same design. If it's something I'm not going to carry, I just get it in hardback. But you still want to break in hardbacks because hardbacks mess up because pages fall out. So I've done a video on how to break in a Bible. You just want to break the spine in and it really helps. So um, here's what it's going to look like when you get to a page. I just turn to a random page here. And I'll show you how to use this. I mean, it's going to have basic center column reference. And then we'll look at the word study Bible and see if it's set up uh, even remotely similar. Yeah, their design is fantastic. And it does, it's got decorative head and tail bands. This one doesn't, but I'm sure they're Smith. So, see, that's a big thing that they're doing with Bibles now. Like, this lays flat in Genesis. That's just amazing. So, like, it says, whoso sheddeth. And then it says, sheddeth is 3210. I hope that says 3210 and not 8210. 3210. And so, that's in the Old Testament. So, it's going to be Hebrew. So you're going to go to the back, and it's going to basically have like a Strong's in the back. And uh, boy, that may be 8210. I can't tell, because it says Sheddeth is lodging. I don't think it's lodging. So let's look and see if it's 8210. If it even goes up to the 8000s. Oh, it does. This is also kind of cool because it tells you, you know, how many Hebrew words are in the Old Testament. Um, yeah, so shafak, primitive root to spill blood, a libation. So here on my left hand, you can kind of see. So that's what you do. You find the number in here. It's going to have a little bit of affinity with like a Thompson chain reference in that. 
but not totally and go to the back and it's going to have an incredible not just strongs but i think it's also some expansion on that as well also i wanted to see if it had introductions so let's see if it's got introductions before each book it does have a really good concordance the print pretty good you know but you don't get this just to read per se it's more study because you have all the numbers and all that so it does have brief introductions and it also has brief commentary at the bottom we'll see if it's a uh, red letter as well we'll check that out I kind of think it is, but let's double check. Now they make this in several other translations. I know, I say several, I know NASB, I think they've got it out in some other ones too. Yeah, it is red letter. A lot of ghosting, a lot of stuff going on on the pages. But again, this is a, it says keyword study Bible. Now the thing you have to watch, I've done some videos on the proper use of Hebrew and Greek uh, study tools is you know Hebrew and Greek are not expansive languages like the English language is getting up close to a million words if not above that now it used to be over three quarters of a million it just keeps adding words whereas these would just have several thousands of words and so you'd have to use the same word for several different concepts and then context would interpret that word so you just can't go to the back and say well it means this and but let me just come up with some weird doctrine on this definition you can't do that and so I always say the best definition is the definition in the text you know like sheddeth so the best definition if you were to look up that Hebrew word what was it shafak or whatever it was the best definition of that is sheddeth the shed and uh, so uh, that's just how it is okay so this is set up way totally different you can see there's no center column reference you can see there's no numbering system you can see that on one page there is something that is giving us some understanding so the NKJV Word Study Bible contains 1,700 straightforward, readable Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek word studies to help you delve more deeply into the original languages. And so it's going to give these jewels of wisdom. Like, okay, I'm in Joshua 6. We've got the destruction of Jericho. March around Hebrew. Sahab, Exodus 13, 18, 2 Samuel 5, 23, Psalm 118 and 10, Ecclesiastes 116, and Strong's number is H5437. H stands for Hebrew. Literally to turn, turn around, or about, or aside, or back, or towards. The translation used here, march around, offers a good word picture. The word can also describe turning around, Judges 18 to 23, or surrounding something, Genesis 19, 4. Same word is used in the way watchmen walk through a city, Song 5, 7. And uh, water wraps around someone, Psalm 88, 17, and Jonah 2, 3, and 5. So the Israelites wrapped around. But again, just because the same word is used in a different place, doesn't mean it means the same thing in that place just like can in english can mean a round cylindrical object it can mean a conjunction it can mean a preposition you know it's a euphemism for you know restroom so it just depends on the context on how it's used so let's go to uh, very good print i do want to give kudos to the print here and so it's got some really nice uh introductions very small but really packed full of information a little more readable print now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring up a page of the Hebrew keyword in this and just kind of let you see so you can just kind of compare them side by side if I'm able to do that and sister Fran's able to zoom in there hope my fingers are not in the way 
is guaranteed for life, this Nelson. This is the best time in history for Bibles. It just really is. I'm very grateful. I remember on Hell's Bells 2, this Christian uh, rock music expose video series. It was very well done, but they said something like Timothy Leary went to see uh, Thomas Huxley in the hospital and Huxley spoke in a guttural voice and he said uh, the Bible is our enemy and evolution is our religion you know Timothy never forget that so I'm very grateful that Bibles are like everywhere and I, I pray and I hope you pray too that there will be in every country so let's go to oh I want to see if this is in red letter it is. I'll show you the red letter. Obviously, with the different colorations, it too is going to have quite a bit of ghosting. But I would see it's very much more readable just because it's a little darker print than the uh, key word is. So here's an example of uh, their concordance compared to if I can get to the concordance I'm just going to have to set this one down and then do the word study the keyword study bible yeah with them smith selling all these hardbacks now like I said I mean this thing opened flat in Genesis Printed in South Korea. Again, I wonder if it's the same place the defined was. Let's see if this one opens flat in Genesis. See, usually only the finest Bible look at it, just opens flat in Genesis. That is incredible. Um, so, let's see if it's got any maps in the back. I also wanted to do a page count. It does have the new Nelson maps. Not a lot, like eight. Same as in the Premier Study Bible. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe nine. We'll just give you an example of the maps. And it is gonna be on thicker paper. Sometimes they're putting maps, for whatever reasons, um, with not thicker paper. The regular paper does take the size down just a little bit. So there's that. Let's see if there's maps back here. And then we're going to do like a word count. Yeah? How about that? And it says it's from mapquest.com. I'd have never guessed MapQuest does biblical maps, but here we are. I'm a big, I will tell you, over the years, I have learned so much from study Bibles. And I have learned a lot from just sitting and reading maps for five or ten minutes at the time. Because you really get to see where things are. And so as you're reading the Bible, it really helps. So I think, let's just show you. You can see that the... Uh, key word is much bigger than the NKJV Word Study Bible. I'll just pull the ruler out here let you get a feel for that. So the key word study Bible, excuse me, the word study Bible in KJV, very well done by the way. This is this stuff in the front is actually raised on here. That's kind of cool. Um, and it's actually a tad taller. So we'll let you see the height. And when I say a tad, I'm talking about like an eighth of an inch to a sixteenth of an inch taller. But the key word's going to be thicker. They're going to make these in leather too. But the uh, NKJV word study is going to be more like just looking at, it's not going to be in totality like the keyword study Bible is. Keyword study Bible is literally going to have many 
uh, thousands, over 10,000 definitions in the back. And so let's see how many total pages this thing is. I do want to just see this too. We were going to do word studies in the Premier Study Bible, but some of our language people said since definitions are so highly contextualized, they felt like we'd be in danger of twisting the scriptures, which we didn't want to do, obviously. So, um, 2016, look at this. Our friends at Barton Veerman Company, Bruce Barton, who was Ravi Zacharias's faculty advisor at Trinity, Dave Veerman, good friend of mine, Linda Taylor, what a wonderful person, um, Nancy Taylor, Jeremy Taylor, and they're all not related. I thought they were related to me. Um, to my knowledge, they're not. Okay, so that is just amazing. So, let's see how many pages total this is, if it's got a total. Well, it does, right up here. So, 1 to 1,529, but then it goes past that. That's where the concordance starts. So, it's total 1,742 pages. Nice print, probably 10-point print. And this is going to be... Let's see how many pages. Boy, it shows a lot of how-to, all the, does it come in leather, abbreviations. So this goes all the way to over 2,000. And that's where the Greek dictionary starts. So it's going to have 2,284, so about 500 um, pages more and that's really more information I mean it's got information at the bottom it's just going to have a lot more in there so this is the comparison between the NKJV word study Bible and the Hebrew Greek keyword study Bible I'm not sure if they've come out with a word study in King James yet or other translations um, since Thomas Nelson and Zondervan have merged there can be some cross-pollination there between the NIV and the New King James and of course the King James. I always recommend all Bible companies since the King James in America is open source it is copyrighted in the UK that it uh, they just go ahead and do it I mean because you don't have to pay a copyright fee and it's still you know uh, that pew poll just came out um, that 51% of the people who read the Bible daily still read the King James Version. So the other versions may be outselling it somewhat, but it, this is, King James still has an extraordinarily dedicated following. So God bless you, love you, and uh, just read the Word of God. Ask God to help you understand it and live it. God bless in Jesus' name.